And there's a guy coming on late here, starting to get some good recognition in the national rankings. Ranked 23rd in the country, as you alluded to, Joe. 15 and 6 on the season. I like Jude Swisher as a prospect for Penn. The right to the line. Oh, this is a nice move right here by Fernandez, though. Able to get back exposure there on that takedown. Couldn't quite stick him, though. It's a weird sequence there. Swisher immediately in the wash there. He was in big trouble and an escape. Three to one. We did a good job getting out and getting right back to the center of the mat now to see if he's, if he's going to push the pace here. And I was just mentioning how I like Swisher. Just a freshman in this lineup. He was with the PRTC last year, so it wasn't in the varsity lineup. But went 17 and 7 with them last year. All the matches he's able to wrestle. 13 and 5 this year, so he's on the doorstep of those national rankings as well. Could see him try to get a bid to NCAAs as well. Been wrestling well this year. He pinned Jack Crook last time out in 30 seconds. Again, just a bit of a funky takedown on that opening sequence, and now he's he's on the attack here, working that front head. So again, I like the aggressiveness right here. And again, if you're if you're Swisher, you're able to win this one here. You pick up a ranked guy. A lot more people around the nation are going to take notice. Ethan Fernandez won a top 25 war against Eli Rivera last time out, 11-7 by decision. And that was probably the bout of the night in the Princeton duel. And that's another guy I like, just to talk about a third team in Princeton with Eli Rivera, the young buck over there for the Tigers. He's been coming on right away. He's going to be dangerous for quite a bit. Swisher down 3-1 here for Penn. 114 to go in the opening period. He's getting good movement here, but Fernandez is able to keep him at bay at least a little bit because he is reaching down for those ankle picks here. He's able to be a little quick with it. Off these collar ties, he's basically posting at the head, trying to get a quick snap down, but Swisher definitely trying to entice the officials to throw out that stall warning. But Fernandez is doing whatever he can right now to just try to re-attack. Swisher tried hitting a little bit of a knee pick right off that front head. He's trying to do the same thing again with the other hand. 30 seconds. Fernandez doing a nice job of keeping his legs unavailable for Swisher. 23 seconds left. We'll get a restart. And Fernandez kind of reached in on that last shot right there, maybe just to show the referee that he is working here, not just backing up and defending. It was good matter when so he did it right near the boundary where he could potentially force a restart. And, of course, they did here now a short time. Lots of time left here, Nick, of course. But uh, judging by the way that this one started, kind of thought Fernandez would be swinging for the fences in this one. Four Hasn't seconds. happened. Three, two, There's that first stall warning, of course, on Fernandez. He's been getting backed up pretty much that entire period on his feet. So I love the aggressiveness and the mat awareness and mat control there from Jude Swisher. You, make up the, you can make up these deficits quite quickly these, these days. So he's going to need a quick escape here. Does get the escape. One neutral pitch. So now he's down one. Swisher trailing Fernandez. You saw Fernandez just hanging on the head right there. Referee is going to start swiping for that as he are hanging on a limb. And again, you see Fernandez trying to reach it on these outside singles, trying to show that he's active, but it's not enough right now to really get Swisher off of his path. Good shot, though, here to force this scrimmage. Now, Switch is going to do a little bit more work to defend this one. Good job by Fernandez to get back to the side of Swisher. After it looked like they might go north-south there for a second. And he came out now to his feet, able to elevate. See if he can pull him back in. Switch has got a post on the trap here, trying to get his kick his foot free. And nice job getting out to the splits right there for the moment.
Got to give Swisher a lot of credit here on the boundary. Able to get his foot free. Unbelievable. Pretty good from Swisher to avoid that takedown. There's that shot for Fernandez. Oh, that is just great hips from Swisher. Now you see him throw that wizard with the right arm right now. Over top that shoulder. And was square back up. That was just nicely done because I would say Fernandez was it. That was the deepest shot he was able to take all evening. Ten seconds left in this middle frame. Both wrestlers have had their chances here, and they've taken good Four shots. Seconds. Haven't Three, consolidated. Two, one, we head to the five. third. Swisher looks like he was asked in the corner if he would go to if he wanted to start neutral. Let's see if he goes to the optional start here. He's been, he's been very successful on his feet, and he is going to opt for it. So one return. So now it is a 4-2 advantage for Fernandez. Swisher's in this again. He's drawn out a couple stall calls here. Another one will be another point. He is pushing the pace right now. He's keeping his back towards the center of the mat, trying to push forward. Can't just run a guy out, but he's definitely attacking. Fernandez is going to have to get those reattacks going again. Stalemate called. Yeah, it was like too much finger clasping right there, so they wanted to reset. And it's a one takedown match. Ryan time's not a factor. Swisher can go ahead with a takedown. Oh, well, that was nice Fernandez. by Fernandez. On well, that single leg Swisher scrambling. See so Fernandez rocking, getting around the other leg. Can he drive in? The head's still caught right now. Swisher's got to try to get his hips back. And there's the takedown for Fernandez. Fernandez just doing enough to send Swisher to his rear end for that takedown. Yeah, got him broken down, and I think we're going to get a challenge break from the Penn bench. Might as well. It's the final battle of the evening. Take a chance here. But Fernandez did have that left arm around. And his challenging he did drive Swisher to his butt, as you mentioned, Joe. And I think he actually was seated on the ground in control before he relocked his hands around the crotch in order to try to elevate there as well and defend. As you're coming around through the hip and then around the leg. We'll, so, look, at, we'll look at our replay inception, of course. Exactly. <laughs> now all we need is either lip reading or just a little bug in the ear to see what's going on down there. You set up pretty nice tonight. I think uh, next time we need a uh, quick microphone over there as well. <laughs> exactly. They said no takedown. After a few, the or they did rule a takedown. Well, I've never seen, they waved the arms and then put the three up. So it, it, the takedown's awarded. Looks like the challenge was unsuccessful. Ah. But, but I got to say, I was confused for about a split second as well. <laughs> what? I was going to say, that was a quick review to say they're going to overturn the call. This is nice by Fernandez to stay on top. Swisher looked like he was going to get away a couple times there. Has not yet. He's been tenacious on top of Swisher, just constantly trying to get back to his feet, able to cut this down to a four-point match. Again, Ryan Time not a factor, but Swisher's going to need more than just one takedown with just 30 seconds 30 to go. Seconds. He's going to have to get a takedown of Fernandez again right to his back. Good shot here. Now there's one. And an escape. So Swisher can take it down with it. One more takedown. Fernandez has the stall call against him as well. Just 13 seconds here, though. Swisher diving for it. He's only got five seconds. There's the stall. It's not going to hurt him. A battle once again. 8-7. Fernandez with the 8 7 decision win. So Cornell beats Penn 26 to 8.
Well, a great night of wrestling for Cornell, winning eight of ten bouts. We saw C.J. Composto pick it up for Penn near the end. They were to Tech fall. Obviously, Nick Contreras was dominant for the most part at 174. But when you look at that first half, Joe, just too much from the Big Red. Too controlling on top. They won the close ones. They won those tight positions. Able to have those deciding factors, which were mostly the takedowns or the lone takedowns of the match. Again, just too tough in the beginning right there. And the lead was a little bit more insurmountable there. Cornell sends Penn to their first Ivy League loss, and they secure their 43rd Ivy League title. Penn on the road against Princeton next Saturday. Meanwhile, Cornell turns their attention to a rough weekend. NC State and then Apple.